What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, spicy, tender, amazing barbecue jerk ribs with some Caribbean Johnny Cakes. Coming up. These are some pork ribs. Pat them dry. And what I got here is a full spare rib. Picked these up at my local grocery store. Got some really nice marbling to them. But today I'm going with a full spare, which is pretty much a St. Louis with all these extra rib tips on top. And if you see my other rib videos, you'll know that we're basically gonna trim this down to a St. Louis rack, but leaving a little extra meat on there, which is my preferred rib. A little bit bigger, nice and meaty, nice and fatty. But we gotta get these trimmed up. Starting with this skirty flat meat on the back. Just gonna take that off. Beautiful, flip it over. And there's always this big muscle on top. You know I like to remove that because it's meat, then a layer of fat, then meat. So this will kind of overcook and probably slide off because of all this fat rendering underneath it. But you can leave it on if you want. No big deal. Piece of meat removed. Great for sausage, great for a little pit snack. Now I'm gonna go around and just kind of tidy this up a bit. I'm gonna leave the membrane on as I usually do with ribs. I really don't notice much of a difference, especially the way we're gonna be cooking these. And there's usually a breastbone right here, but as you can see, that's already been removed, which is pretty convenient. We do have some hard pieces of cartilage, so I'll probably snip that down just a little bit more. Just a little bit of a sloppy butcher on that. And now, all we need to do is shape this up, because as you can see, it's really thin, kind of flailing on this end a little bit. So we're just going to kind of zip a little bit off the top, giving it some good shape. And same for this end. There's no bones in there. Pretty thin. So we're going to find that last little bone, and just <whistles> off it comes. Just rounding corners at this point, making sure nothing's too sharp. And I probably should take this little bone off there, but I really like gnawing on that one at the end of the cook. So I'm gonna call that a nicely trimmed rack of spare ribs. Been a minute since I trimmed one of these, but pretty happy about it. In fact, I'm gonna do two. This one does have the breastbone on there still. You can see that whole bone right there. Real easy to take off. Save that for some stock. And this one does not have that flap of meat on there. So things to look for when you're picking out a rack at the store. Beautiful, very nice looking rack of ribs. Now we're gonna hit these with the same marinade I did in my jerk chicken video. So let's go ahead and make that marinade. So into our food processor, we're going in with one white onion, one bunch of green onions, a whole bunch of garlic, some brown sugar, some thyme, the juice of one lime. There's no juice in there. Maybe two limes, that last one had not much in it. It's like it's winter or something. Scoot that over, it's into a hot dry pan. I'm gonna go in with some black peppercorns and some allspice berries. And we're gonna dry toast those for just a minute or two until everything is nice and fragrant. And once nicely toasted into the spice grinder we go, and we blend away. Whew, that smells good. And then in we go. Beautiful. Next up, we're gonna go in with a little shot of some soy sauce. Maybe a little more. Oops. And some habanero peppers. And I know scotch bonnets are traditionally used here, but uh, they're pretty similar and I can't ever find scotch bonnet, so habanero is gonna have to do. And last time I know I had to add a bunch to make the spice level I want, so uh, oops. Oh no. I'm gonna burn out Joe Yim today. You're eating one of these, buddy. Boop. And now lid goes on. And we'll get this all blended up. And now while it blends, I'm gonna go in with some oil, probably about half a cup or a cup or so, and just stream it in slowly. Beautiful. And at this point, I'm gonna give it a little taste. That tastes really good. Good amount of heat to it this time. Mm. Is this too spicy? I don't think so. I know there's no apples in here. Right. It's like a savory applesauce. That's very accurate. Should I throw some more habaneros in there? As soon as you said that, I can feel in the back of my throat. That's what I said at first. I was like, oh, this is really nice and fruity and floral. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, Ugh. The applesauce mm -hmm. is gonna work great with the pork ribs. Love it. Yeah. He's literally editing videos right over here while watching Batman. <laughs> I'm really not distracted at all. Now, before I go throwing the marinade on these ribs, I'm gonna go through and hit these with some salt because there's really not that much salt in the marinade other than that little bit of soy sauce. This makes it a lot easier for me to eyeball the amount of salt I need. Both sides. And we're not gonna forget the sides, folks. That would be a rookie move. And now into our intended vessel, we go. And now, you guessed it, on we go. Just gonna try and get this as evenly spread as possible. Top and bottom. Oh, that smells so good. Looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna let these go overnight. I wouldn't suggest going much longer, but at least a good four hours on this should do the trick. So I'm gonna wrap these up, pop them in the fridge, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. One overnight marination later. 
These ribs are looking pretty much the same. Meat darkened up a little bit on them. Smells absolutely amazing. So out they come. I'm gonna scrape off some of this marinade because it'll probably burn up on us on the pit, but I'm not gonna be too particular about it. Definitely leaving a good amount on there. Second rack coming out and looking absolutely beautiful. And before I throw these ribs on the smoker, I'm gonna make a really quick jerk rub. <coughs> Starting with some allspice berries and a couple cloves going into the old spice grinder into the bowl, followed by some granulated garlic, granulated onion, a little bit of ground ginger, just cause I have it, some cumin, some dry thyme, a little bit of habanero powder, good amount of black pepper, and some kosher salt. And just get that all nice and mixed up. I'm just kind of winging this rub if you couldn't tell and I just give it a taste and whoo, that habanero powder is nothing to joke around with. So I'm gonna go in with a little pinch of sugar as well, balance it out a little bit. Back over to our ribs. Grab some of our rub and give it a nice light dusting all over. Just building some more layers of flavor. Love the black pepper and thyme on there. Should help get some nice texture on these bad boys. But these are looking pretty good to me, so let's go ahead and fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. Rocking a pretty standard cook on these ribs. Starting out bone side down. Got this fire rocking right around 300 degrees. Gonna get some nice direct heat flavor when the fat and juices start dripping onto the coals. But I'm also gonna throw a couple chunks of wood in there for a little extra smoke flavor and hopefully get a flame going because they like to cook over wood. Get some nice smoke rolling, keep the pit nice and hot and we'll check back in on these in a little bit. So it's been about an hour. Let's check in on these bad boys. We had some flames licking up, so we should have some pretty good color on these. But top is looking nice. All that marinade and rub has set on pretty well. Looking underneath, ooh, got some pretty good color on there. That marinade is definitely charring up a little bit, as is to be expected when you put a marinade over direct flames like this. But I'm okay with it. Just like my jerk chicken. It came out pretty dark, but either way, those are looking pretty tasty to me. So now we're gonna get some color on the top side and start working on our sauce. For our rib sauce today, we're gonna to take the rest of this marinade and we're gonna go into a pot. Ooh. And we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer to cook off any raw pork juices that might still be in there and let that veg start to cook down a little bit. It smells very good, a little spicy. And I'm also gonna go in with some homemade chicken stock. I was gonna use pork stock, but uh, I'm fresh out, so this nice thick gelatinous chicken stock will do just fine. And because that is a homemade stock and it's full of gelatin, I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of water just to thin this out a bit. And once up to a simmer and everything's cooked down a little bit, we're gonna go in with some cold butter just to add a little more velvety mouthfeel, a little bit of richness, and uh, I never mind having butter in a rib glaze, I'll tell you that much. And just stir that in until everything is nice and melted. Probably going in with about a stick total. Boop. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt for good measure. Also gonna go in with a splash of some apple cider vinegar just to add a little bit more brightness to this. But taste and adjust as you see fit. Oh, that's really good. A little sweetness sounds like a good idea too. One other thing I'm gonna attempt to make today is some Caribbean Johnny cakes. And that's something I've never had before. But I was doing some research earlier and it seems like a pretty easy fried dough recipe. So to kick things off, into this bowl, I'm gonna go in with some all-purpose flour, some baking powder, some kosher salt, and some granulated sugar. And just get that all nice and mixed up. Next up, some softened butter. Boop. And I'm just gonna work that in, kind of like a pie dough, trying to get that as evenly dispersed as possible. And then start drizzling in some water. I'm gonna go little by little until we get the dough consistency that I'm after. And once a nice dough ball has been formed, out we come, and we're gonna just shape this into a nice ball. And really, I just added enough water until it was a nice supple dough and was all coming together nicely. And now we're just gonna knead this for a couple of minutes. We don't wanna develop too much gluten, but I want it to be nice and elastic and smooth. And now we gotta form this into some balls, and I'm not really gonna be too precise. I know I usually bust out a scale at this point, but we're gonna just go by feel. Dough feels nice, though. I don't really care if they're all the same size or not. And give it the old table roll. And now I'm gonna let these rest, probably throw some greasy plastic wrap over the top so they don't dry out and let that gluten relax. But I think it's time to check back in on those ribs. And off the pit we come, looking nice and dark. All that sauce cooked onto there pretty nicely. They're rocking right around 185 and 190 internal. And they are just smelling absolutely heavenly. And before you slide into the comments being like, oh, they look burned, which I did hit them a little harder than anticipated. But uh, if you just Google any jerk rib, they're all really dark. Same with jerk chicken. And that's just extra flavor. But these guys were on the pit for about two and a half, three hours for pretty quick and simple cook. And now we're just gonna grab some of that sauce we made earlier and just go right over the top. Oh yeah, don't be shy folks. That's what we're talking about. Oops, oh no. Flip these over, throw some on the backside as well. 
Now my pit is almost dead at this point. It's on its way down. So I'm probably gonna throw these back on for just another probably 30 minutes or so just to cook in the wrap a little bit. Also that sauce is really hot. So that'll help kind of steam these until they are perfectly tender and ready to slice in. Out at the fryer here, I grabbed one of our little dough balls. I dusted that with some flour and you could roll these out, but I'm just gonna kind of pinch them a little bit. And that's because we wanna really flatten the inside of these. So the inside doesn't get undercooked before the outside is nice and golden brown. And in the fryer at 350 to 375 degrees until they're looking nice and golden and nice and puffy. Now these definitely float. So you're gonna wanna go through every now and then and flip them over, but we're getting that nice deep golden brown color I'm after. So I'm thinking these are done. So now I'm gonna pull them up and just let them drain a little bit. God, they smell good. And fresh out of the fryer, these are looking absolutely beautiful. Love that golden brown, feeling nice and puffy and smelling really good, but they're still very hot. So we're gonna let these cool down, which gives us plenty of time to get these ribs sliced up. Ooh, feeling nice and tender, looking good. Beautiful rack of ribs. Take off his little nubbins at the end here. You know? Nice cook on those. Pretty quick too. Gotta love that. And then we'll take some of this extra sauce and just, uh, oops. Oh no. And there it is, folks. A big, beautiful pile of some jerk pork ribs with some freshly made Johnny cakes on the side. And, uh, whew. I'm ready to dive on in. Gotta say folks, ever since I made that jerk chicken video, I have been dying to make some beautiful jerk pork ribs and uh, whew, let's go for it. Mm. Ooh, that was so juicy. Look at that perfect bite. Mm. That is phenomenal. Definitely not too spicy, but it's there in the background. Mm. It's just got so much flavor to it. Mm. Just gonna keep going. Mm. Wow, that is a good pork rib. Mm. It's smoky, it's savory. It's got that kick on the back end, pretty herbaceous from all the thyme and onion and stuff in that marinade, but it's still truly a pork rib, right? It's not overpowering in any way. It's just a very pleasant experience. Mm, 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 mm. That is a good rib. Let's uh, tear this open and see how it looks. Whoa, big old pocket. It's like a Runza. Let's just try it by itself first. Okay, okay, I can get behind that. One thing's for sure though, I definitely made them way too big. I probably should have gone half or at least a third the size of this. Had little bites instead of these pretty much buns at this point, but uh, either way, it still tastes good. Mm. It's like reminiscent of a donut because it's a fried dough, but it's not yeasted. There's not enough sugar in it to make it sweet. There's not enough salt in it to make it savory. So it really is a perfect little blank canvas for whatever you want to do. You know, I could easily see throwing some like cinnamon sugar on this and making a dessert out of it, or just putting some butter and salt on it and calling it a day with a savory note. But the real reason I made these is for sopping up all these table juices and that extra marinade because that sounds good to me. Mm. That's really good. Don't know why I waited so long to try this one, folks. That is just a flavor bomb. Joe Yim, Joe Yim, Joe right, Yim, Joe Yim. Would you like to try some yeah. jerk ribs? I've been smelling this all day. That looks good. All right, honest review. Let me know what you think. Did you wrap the ribs mm -hmm. in foil? The texture on the rib tip is really nice. It's not that hot. That's what I was saying. It builds a little bit, but it's like a very pleasant level of heat. Yeah. This is kind of like entry level hot sauce heat mm -hmm. where it's got a lot of the savory notes and there's a little bit of heat just to like want you eating more. Right. And it doesn't taste like hot apple sauce anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a marinade, but it eats like a barbecue sauce. Yeah. It's great. It's kind of tastes like a barbecue, like an old school barbecue sauce where they take like the onions. Yeah. And they kind of blitz it in there. Right, right, right. The only downside is I don't really get much direct heat flavor because there's so much flavor going on in the sauce. But yeah. For a three hour cook. Pretty good. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Stopping up the sauce. So you may have noticed that Bones is not in this video because he's in Vermont skiing with his dad right now. So we can't really do a segment of Bones Try Something Weird. So we're gonna introduce a new segment <laughs> called Joe Yim Eats Something Really Spicy. It's okay. a red one too. I know. Yeah, we were doing research on it earlier and they said considerably hotter than the orange cousin. I was like, oh no. It looks so scary. Hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> oh, dude, the whole thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can hear your feet moving. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Walk it off, ah! pal. <sighs> I feel bad for my plumbing. That was a bad idea. <laughs> what do I do? Go oh, for a jog. Ah! There he goes. On the move. Oh, he's going for the keg. Oh no, he's not. Ah! Hagen Dazs vanilla Swiss almond is my favorite ice cream. <laughs> I would have joined you on this challenge, but I had to hold the camera, you know. <laughs> Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Knocks out BBQ. He's earned it. Oh my God. 
All right, y'all, with this very last Jamaican jerk pork rib, I think it's time for the official taste test. Get that meat off of there, there we go. Nice and clean. Oh no, there's more. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely incredible smoky jerk pork ribs. I think this one is a must, you know? Other than the fact that you have to marinate them overnight in a pretty big container, it's a super simple recipe, and the flavor is just outstanding, and a very welcome change of pace from a traditional barbecue rib. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.